<laughs> Via telephone, Ellen Allen uh, is with us. She is the executive director of West Virginians for Affordable Health Care. Ellen, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me on. You know, when I was typing your name into our uh, promo uh, slug on Facebook, I wasn't paying attention. I put Ethan Allen, and I thought, boy, that would be a get for an interview, wouldn't it? I know. I get called that occasionally. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I promise name. not to make that mistake twice. Uh, That's okay. Ellen, tell me about your, your uh, ascent to the executive director of West Virginians for Affordable Health Care before we get into a couple of things. Congratulations, by the way, on the post. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, it's uh, quite an honor, and I'm really pleased to be here. I've spent the last 16 years uh, leading uh, various nonprofits, and the consistent theme all of those um, was was healthcare. Essentially, you know, when I worked for Covenant House, most of those years, over over 10 years, we really worked hard to address uh, particularly people who are most vulnerable living on the streets or subject to um, homelessness. And uh, we often were in a position to help connect people to healthcare for the very first time in their lives. And we saw the difference that made. So being able to, to be lead of a, a policy organization that hopefully can you know, bring more access and affordability to more West Virginians is a pretty exciting proposition. So I'm really excited to be here. Can you... Or is there a definition for affordable health care? Well, you know, it's a, I'll compare it to how I talked about housing when I was working and, and trying to get people housed. Uh, you know, West Virginia had the most affordable housing market in the country, but if you can't afford it, it's not affordable, right? Right. But one thing we can count on in health care is no matter what inflation is, the increases in health care premiums are going to outpace that one year. Uh, working on my budget uh, as a nonprofit, we had $125,000 budgeted for nine people to pay for health care. We had a 25% increase in one year. So um, that that's really unsustainable. And so many people depend on employer-based health care at a time that fewer employers are offering that. So that's one thing we've been celebrating uh, this week is the one-year anniversary of the of the um, Inflation Reduction Act. And one of the significant changes, particularly for West Virginians, that we saw in that, it increased the subsidies uh, for the um, ACA. And 21,000 West Virginians uh, received enhanced tax credits, making their health care a lot more affordable. So if you're a family of four, an average middle class family, you know, making under $100,000 a year, you're going to pay less you're, you're going to save about eighteen thousand dollars in annual premium so that's that's the affordability issue and that's eighteen thousand dollars that's going to go you know back into the economy as well but um and these are people often who they're, they're working people they don't have employer-based health care health care they may be in the service industry but they also make too much to qualify for medicaid right so they're falling between the cracks there, and that's where the Affordable Care Act can help and these enhanced subsidies. And even with that, there's still a segment of the population that can't afford the Affordable Care Act. They make just a little bit too much for Medicaid expansion, or they have seasonal fluctuation where maybe they have three jobs for several months. That puts them over the income limit, and they end up what we call churning where they're on and off the Medicaid. And, you know, once you go off Medicaid, you know, it can take months to requalify. And, and our goal really is to drive people from Medicaid into an affordable health plan. So those are all things we're working on and are excited to be a part of that. Can you make sense of uh, when you look at polls in West Virginia of the Inflation Reduction Act? It's overwhelmingly referred to in the polls as a negative perception. In fact, there are people who say that Joe Manchin, because of uh, the Inflation Reduction Act and helping get President Biden uh, that passed, uh, may be unelectable in terms of his reelection bid as a senator. Yet West Virginia is is the if not one, if not the then one of the poorest states in the nation. Where, as you point out, the Inflation Reduction Act provided more funds for people to get affordable health care who otherwise wouldn't have afforded it. Right. But 
polls overwhelmingly show West Virginians did not support the passage of that bill. Can you make sense yeah. of that? No, I can't. Other than I think it's the, the polarization we live in, which is really unfortunate because I think if you took uh, labels off and parties off and names off and you said, look, uh, your, my 90-year-old mother, for example, is going to save over $2,000 a month. Uh, excuse me, two thousand dollars a year in out-of-pocket drug costs because of the the changes that have come forth in the um, Inflation Reduction Act. It caps this bill caps out-of-pocket drug costs for seniors at two thousand dollars a year. Last year she had over four thousand dollars. She's ninety years old, and you know, fortunately she's able to pay that. But it you know she has to think about you know okay what's most important um, really, really budget for that. So. That's going to impact like 319,000 West Virginians. So I think if they just actually look, particularly the health care piece, they would not be against this. And you know, there are polls that really when asked, particularly about the health care piece, there's something like 80 percent of West Virginians are in favor of that. So the only way I can even explain it, and I'm not very politically astute, but um, is that it's just we, we've chosen sides and regardless of of what actually is in a bill or in a position we're not looking at sometimes that really what what benefits our families john gilstrap good morning you know there's no such thing as a free lunch right so if, we, if we're going right. to um we're going to cap the out-of-pocket expenses for anything whether it's medication or for x-rays or whatever it's going to be uh, somebody's got to pick up that extra and that is coming from the the taxpayer is that right well, the, yes, yeah. I mean, we're you know we're government, we're a community. We we live together in a in a country. Uh, we, you know, we can pay it in preventive costs, or we can pay it in emergency rooms, or and Medicaid when people end up uh, sicker earlier in their lives. So, I mean, there's really no avoiding you know healthcare and the need for healthcare as human beings. So, um, it really is a lot smarter to make the investment in uh, helping people access healthcare before chronic disease sets in and uh, it just becomes a more expensive health issue. Well, in our case, not to get into the personal stuff, but the, the my wife and I have been self-employed for years, right? And uh, fortunately, we've we've now reached that magic 65. So um, except my wife, she's never going to be 65. Uh, so so that but prior to uh, Medicare, we were paying twenty four thousand dollars, 12 a piece, twenty four thousand dollars a year. In, in medical insurance. Now, we've been blessed, and, and, and we could do that. But if, if that is the value of health insurance, and now for, for people who can't afford that, and many people can't afford that, that's, that's, that's a lot of money, right. what kind of health care are they getting? And I tell you, that was not wonderful health care <laughs> at, the, at the 24 grand. So is, it, is there a lesser quality of service for the, the folks who are um, at the bottom of the income ladder and, and need these, the, the health care? Is it the same health care that, that more affluent people are going to be getting? No, it's the same health care. I mean, um, you have access to the same, actually the same plan that uh, our senators and Congress people have. Um, you know, the, High Mark, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and there's different levels of plans uh, based on, you know, many, many small business owners uh, use the ACA. So uh, the enhanced tax credit has made it much more affordable um, to to get whether it be a, a gold plan, a silver plan, or a bronze plan. But people on the lower income spectrum are, are not receiving lesser service. So. Uh, Let's take a step back. Act. I think I, I might be confused. The you've got the the uh, Obamacare Health Care Act. What the, the the official name is escaping Affordable me. Care Act. Thank you, Affordable Care Act. And then there's the West Virginia for Affordable Health Care. Are the two related? West Virginians for Affordable Health Care is a nonprofit. We're a, a policy organization. We're we're not a plan. We're, we're an organization that uh, promotes good health care policies. Like health care policies at the insurance level or don't smoke and eat well? No, yeah, general policies. For example, we, we support, um, you know, Medicaid. We support good health care policies, uh, you know, getting in front of our legislators, promoting 
Now, we don't promote specific plans typically. What we do, we work with uh, policy people to write good policy that's good for, for West Virginians. Yeah, the whole the whole healthcare game, and it does feel like a game. Somebody very close to me had a, had a serious accident and uh, broke his leg. It's almost a million dollars later in in leg repair costs. You know, it, there's no way that that actually costs that. Um, I, I think I'm complaining now more than asking a question. But but the whole thing, <laughs> it seems like it, yeah. every, every new regulation just makes the obvious more complicated and it's i find it as as a consumer of healthcare, i find the whole thing um aggravating and really yeah, confusing I'm, yeah i'm a consumer too i don't think it's the regulations i think it's out of control uh, cost you know i think it's um well looking at drug costs for example i mean not being able to negotiate drug prices previously you know why why should we allow you know corporations to profit in such a incredible way that many people can't afford the drugs they need to sustain their lives. I mean, I, I, I believe we have to make a profit and it should be reasonable, but um, the, the costs you're talking about are not the regulations. It's the costs that are passed on from, from the, the industry. So, you know, it needs to be a little fairer for everyone. I mean, we pay the highest uh, healthcare costs in the world and we have, we don't have the best outcomes in the world. So, I agree. We need to address some issues, but regulations uh, are not where the problems are coming from. Well, I'm sure you've heard the cliche that the first pill costs $2 billion, and then after that, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just dividing. <laughs> yeah. Matt Miller. So, Ellen, that leads me to the question, and you, you talked about looking at policy and so forth. Does your organization get it all into possible reforms that need to be made within our health care system to help bring those prices down as opposed to dealing with, say, health care policies that ultimately end up, I, I believe, perpetuating the, the crazy expenses that go out there because it's being paid by a third party. And so they're not the ones who are dealing with the issue. And so I think there's a lot of, of negotiation and other things that go on and, and prices ultimately end up going up. Does your organization deal in any of those types of issues? Well, what, one thing we'll be working with our legislators on this coming session is a bridge plan. And it's designed really to bring people from Medicaid into ACA or employer-based coverage. It's it's the people I re refer to that, that fall in between, and it, it would be a bridge plan for, it could affect 40 to 60,000 West Virginians. Um, it would be a, a lower cost premium, even a no cost premium, depending on what the household income is and lower, lower cost sharing with the idea that this would allow people to take promotions at work and earn more money without getting kicked off Medicaid, then continue to increase, hopefully, their success at work and get better jobs and end up in a position where they have employer-based insurance. So those are the uh, type things that we really get behind. Um, another thing that uh, we're really happy to have and we supported uh, was the uh, cap on insulin at $35 a month for people on Medicare. That, that's usually... Uh, significant. So those are some of the things we, we get behind. Do you um, know much about or do you deal in any way with um, like medical cooperative plans? Uh, a lot of those tend to be uh, religious, Christian-based type of organizations that, that share each other's um, medical expenses as opposed to being a part of insurance plans? I, I can't say I'm familiar with those yet, Rob. All right. Um, as far as those in the state who are hearing us right now in, in our area who are looking for affordable health care, they're in that that kind of crack that you talked about. I make too much for this, but I don't make enough for that. What steps can be taken? What do they do like right now where they are to find a way to get a policy and something in place that meets their needs and their family's needs? Yeah, that's a great question because it, it can be challenging, but there's a lot of help out there. There's a navigator in West Virginia, uh, type in West Virginia Navigator ACA, and you can get to uh, a navigator free of charge to the person, and they can help you evaluate what plans would be best for you based on what you know, your income level, what how much your subsidy would be, 
uh, what you're able to bear in terms of potential out-of-pocket costs, because there are quite a few options, and uh, it's a lot more affordable than, than people realize. But Navigator can just be a lifesaver in, in this issue and, and helping, you know, try, rather than trying to do it yourself. It's, you know, people, I, I'm not on Medicare yet, but people talk about how challenging that can be to navigate. I think the marketplace can be, but once you get assistance, it can, you can actually probably do it in less than an hour. Alan, Alan is our guest, the new executive director of West Virginians for Affordable Health Care. Ellen, with the ACA for the longest time in West Virginia, the complaint was there was only one provider, so there wasn't an option. And, you know, you right. take take it or leave it with the premium, basically. Uh, is there a second option now and a third? Is there more variety? There are more options now. I'm I'm not sure how many. I can find that out for you, Rob. But there there is more than one, and um, like so, we have over 21,000 West Virginians on the ACA right now. Actually, it's a record record number. I think there's um, it's over 23,000, actually. And uh, you were talking about what the uh, income exclusions were for Medicaid and, and then some of the other uh, premium levels for companies that might be on the ACA. Uh, have those adjusted with inflation, Alan? Are you aware? Uh, there have been some changes to that uh, with the Inflation Reduction Act, and it's also means-tested, is means-tested, I think, which is, I, I think really important. So I'm looking at some of my notes here. For example, um, in the Inflation Reduction Act ensures a family above the 150% threshold for the poverty level pay no more than 8.5% of their income towards coverage. You know, at one time that was 15%. So that's a significant help to a family. You know, I mentioned the family of four earlier. So this is where that significantly uh, helps reduce the cost for a family. And the changes with the Inflation Reduction Act as they affect health care, have those all been implemented, or does some of them implement over time? Some of those implement over time. For example, I think it's by year 2030, there will be 80 drugs that will be negotiated by Medicare. Beginning in 2026, there will be 10 drugs subject to negotiations. Then in 2027, uh, 15, uh, 20 more drugs in 2029, and by 2030, 80 drugs will be eligible for negotiations. Do any of the changes involve mental health? Um, I think that with respect to medications, yes. Um, as far as mental health, there, the policies that are cover those will, will be included. They're not excluded. They are included in the basic health plans that you'll see on the ACA. So, I'll, Ellen, I'm sure there's more than a few people uh, out there who have um, sort of, they were asleep at the switch and didn't have appropriate health care and now find themselves sick or injured. Uh, is, is there help for them after the fact in terms of, of getting uh, health care coverage? If you have a life-changing event, like you lose your insurance, you change jobs, you get divorced, uh, you can you can uh, enroll in ACA during those events. There's open enrollment beginning in November, uh, but someone can't just decide, okay, I don't think I want to pay for health insurance. Then you get an accident, and then the next day you apply for it. That that you, you can't you can't do unless you enroll. You know, you get a job, and there's health coverage and you can enroll regardless. But otherwise, it has to be some type of life event, marriage, divorce, uh, loss of health insurance, leaving a job. And just to be clear, it, in uh, November, during the open enrollment, can those people who have pre-existing conditions then enroll and, and get health insurance if they do it during the open yes. enrollment in November? Yes, Yes, pre-existing exists. Uh, pre-existing conditions are covered, and that's a part of the affordability, uh, the ACA, which is really, really important. I mean, so many of us have pre-existing conditions, so um, yes, that um, an open enrollment that would not be an issue. I think we all have a pre-existing condition. You're going <laughs> to die at some point. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, we're not made to last forever, right? <laughs> so. There's no getting out of that one, right, Ellen? Would <laughs> 
Would your group advocate that we need to make a disconnect between employment and insurance? That for whatever reason, that's become a connection in our country. And as you've already mentioned, folks that may even be in a certain plan lose that plan as a result of losing a job and then have to get into a Medicaid situation and then make a little too much money for that and get kicked out. It takes months to get back in, which doesn't make sense to me. If I got it three months ago and then, you know, hey, this or that happened in my work and now I don't need it, but three months later I do, it doesn't seem like it should take me months to get back into something I was already receiving. Right. I, I haven't met with our full board yet on policy initiatives, so I'm not speaking uh, to that as far as a, a board initiative, but anything we can do that makes sure people remain covered um, make, makes the most sense. I mean, you shouldn't have to um, depend on a job to have your health insurance. It's great. It's great employers who offer that. But I know, I know too many people who, who remain in jobs they don't like, um, only because of health insurance. So it it would just be, um, I, I think, much better for, for most people if they had access to that. And, you know, the Affordable Care Act gives us, someone can voluntarily leave a job and apply for, you know, the ACA immediately, you know, once they lose their coverage. That is a, a life-changing event. I'm going to go ahead and invite some hate mail here, but it seems to me, that if, if some if an uninsured person has a cell phone and has cable television and has a nice car and has goes on vacations, that that person has made a choice to be uninsured at whatever level that 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 would be. And I, I, I think when getting to what you were talking about, Rob, earlier in terms of, of polling, it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable that the people who make choices don't want to live with the results of their choices. Now, there are many, many people who were, that that does not apply to, but I think there's more than a few that it does. What do you think? Well, I mean, we all make our own choices. I mean, you know, they can have health care or not. I mean, I, I don't argue with, with their choice. Was, was there a greater point to what you were trying to Make, John, an overarching theme behind it? The overarching theme is we're using public money, taxpayer money, to subsidize the, the in this case, health care. They've subsidized a lot of other things, too. Um, for people who have made the choice to have something else other than health care, and now there's a medical condition, and and they want to be rescued from the choice that they've made. It's like it's like waiting to get until your house is on fire to get fire insurance. All right, so, but is your point that... Listen, you made the choice to not have health care. You got to be hospitalized for this condition. Who's going to pay for it now? Or do we just refuse them the health care? Well, I don't know what does happen in that circumstance. We don't. I, I we, ran, all, I, we, we all pay for it. Well, right. no, I ran ambulances for a lot of years. And never once when I was delivering a patient after an auto accident or, health, or heart attack or anything else, nobody asked for their right. card before they treated them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, you, a hospital can't turn you away because you don't have health insurance, not on a, a life threatening event. So, I mean, we all are paying. I mean, you know, that, that's, I think, the misconception people have is why I don't want to subsidize other people's health insurance. Well, you can't be turned away at a hospital. You can't be turned away for health care. So what happens, those prices get reflected in the private insurance market. We all pay, you know, higher higher premiums for for that care. So, you know, why don't we spread it across, you know, how many millions of Americans do we have? I mean, we, it, it all gets paid one way or the other. Didn't we save a trillion dollars the old way? What do you mean? I don't know. I mean, if 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 we're paying for the argument is we're 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 paying for the the unpaid health care through higher insurance rates and what have you. Now we're just paying it up front through tax dollars, which is costing trillions of dollars. And we're paying for people in the old day in, under the old system. We paid for people who were hurt and needed the service under the new system. We're paying people to insure them, insure healthy people against the possibility of, of, of injury or illness. And if the common denominator between the two is they get treated anyway, 
is is this the smartest way to go? That's not a real question. I'm thinking out loud, I think. Right, right. No? Well, you know, I think, too, of what makes sense, like just, you know, forget about the ethics of it, but what makes sense for our economy? I mean, I think we have the lowest labor participation rate in the country. If not the lowest, it's next to the lowest. Mm-hmm. And we also have the poorest health uh, in the nation, and a lot of that is, you know, some of that's personal choices. I mean, you know, that, that's in anything we do. But a lot of it is because people don't have medical homes, or they don't have primary care doctors where they go to, or they delay treatment. I mean, I've seen this over and over in my lifetime, and um, that gets pretty expensive to treat, but it also keeps people from participating fully in the labor force. So, I mean, there's some economic uh, arguments for for healthcare as well and i also just think it's pretty interesting we're the only developed nation in the world that, that doesn't have you know health care for all so just interesting things to ponder ellen good conversation i appreciate your time this morning congratulations on the new gig yes thanks for your conversation thanks for having me on absolutely have a great day take care you too.